Okay, thank, thank you very much, Suzanne. So what we're going to be doing is just giving you a little bit of a quick teaser or trailer to give you a taste of work that we've initiated in um, measuring the behavioural and social drivers of vaccination. So better understanding the reasons for under vaccination. And so um, what we're going to do is really just cover this very quickly. Jointly, I'm going to set the scene and give you a little bit of context and background on how and why we initiated this work. And also just to note that this is focused a little bit more skewed towards um, the needs of low middle income countries and enabling them to better generate data to inform um, their planning in this space. So really thinking about this at a global level, when we look at the trends in coverage of um, the third dose of DTP containing vaccines, we have global coverage more or less stagnating over the last decade. We have a couple of regions, the Western Pacific and the Americas, that have declined in coverage of DTP3 vaccines in the last two years or so. Um, of course, that betrays some country differences. Um, and we also have many measles outbreaks in all regions of the world for many different reasons. And at the same time, there are different factors that are being used to explain these uh, changes uh, and these trends in global immunisation uptake. You know, we know that, uh, for example, vaccine preventable diseases are less visible, the information environment and misinformation is potentially shaping attitudes and behaviours. Um, we also know that access in many places still remains one of the main barriers to uptake. So when we look at the entire picture and the issues that countries are grappling with, what is actually going on? So what data do countries actually have access to? So based on data that WHO gathers on an annual basis from countries, we know that about 35 to 40% of countries are assessing hesitancy or have assessed hesitancy in the last five years or so. So there's a real lack of quality data in mainly low middle income countries that can explain these various trends and to identify these causes of under vaccination. So with WHO and partners based on a long series of conversations, um, we had a vision for not only thinking about the ways in which countries gather coverage data on an ongoing basis for different vaccines, the gathering surveillance data on um, different outbreaks uh, and uh, you know um, cases of different vaccine preventable diseases. We also have a vision for countries being able to systematically gather behavioural and social data that will ultimately answer these questions of not only identifying who and where the under-vaccinated are, but also why. So at the end of last year, we established a working group in consultation with uh, primarily uh, UNICEF and CDC and, and Gabby to provide a set of quantitative and qualitative tools, as well as related user guidance to enable programs and partners to be able to generate and use data to be able to inform the design and evaluation of locally targeted interventions. And this is primarily with the goal of having this data available in country, but also it would roll up to WHO at a global level and also a regional level, so that we could over time be able to track trends in this space as well. So just running through a couple of the objectives here, it's about assessing under vaccination, like I mentioned, having these trends over time at various levels of programs and being able to um, use this data at all levels to better inform the way in which these interventions are targeted, but also some of the support that we're providing from a regional and global level to countries. So I'll hand over to Julie now just to take us through um, some of the work that we're doing in this space um, of the working group that we established in this, um, in, for this effort um, Julie has taken on the role of being um, the chair of the overall effort and the working group involves um, many experts from a range of disciplines globally, so also re representing um, many different uh, geographies and uh, disciplines in this space. So thank you, Julie. And there are a few working group members here and particularly want to acknowledge um, Noel Brewer and Kerry Wiley who have been part of the core group. Um, so uh, our expected outputs are very simply uh, a, a quantitative survey tool 
that's um, delivered to caregivers of children under five years of age and qualitative interview tools that are uh, delivered to caregivers, healthcare workers, community health workers and program managers to get that more contextual system, systemic perspective. And use of friendly um, practical guidance for um, actually using the tools. So what are we doing? And by the way, this is about the third last slide, you'll be glad to know. Because um, our brains are fried. <laughs> What are we doing? So we've looked at uh, the literature on the drivers of vaccination, looking at systematic reviews with a focus on low and middle income countries. We've looked at existing measures. There's some excellent work out there, you know, particular shout out to the work of Heidi Larson at the back there, who's developed the vaccine confidence index and, uh, and the work of others. We've looked at those scales and, and looked at um, uh, what sort of constructs they're measuring. We uh, have developed a model, which I'll show you in a moment, with constructs and uh, plan for a testing process. Importantly, right from the start, we've been looking at the needs and capacities of end users of these tools so that as we're designing them, we can make sure that they're fit for purpose and practical and usable. Uh, we've identified and refined, or well, we're in the process of this, it's very exhaustive, ref, uh, candidate question items. Uh, we've got a plan for cognitive testing in five diverse countries, psychometric validation in the same five countries, and dissemination of the final tools, uh, draft tools and guidance. And then there'll be a period of looking at how they're used and in time for a revision within um, about 18 months. So this is the model I mentioned, and this is based on a paper by the, that Noel led on the psychology of vaccination. Uh, it's imperfect, it's simplified, but it's been a useful guidance for us in, in, in mapping out what we need to start looking at. So it says that what people think and feel, so those, you know, the system one and two factors um, affect motivation to vaccinate along with social processes, so influences. And that includes um, gender roles, for example. And that will affect motivation to vaccinate. We locate hesitancy here, not as a behaviour, not as just thinking and feeling, but as a motivational construct. Once someone's motivated, ideally they'll get vaccinated, or if they're not motivated, they won't vaccinate or they'll partially vaccinate. But we say in this model that practical issues uh, may get in the way and in many countries, well in all countries, they can and do. And they're complex, so we often simplify them by talking about access. But we've uh, mapped out um, eight different constructs that relate to practical issues that are generally aligned around the caregiver's journey to, vac to the vaccination service. Uh, so that's the, that's the sort of conceptual model and as I said right now um, Noel's leading these intensive teleconferences where we've taken the literature, we've looked at what's out there and the group are discussing together what uh, constructs, agreeing on the constructs that we're measuring, the names of those, the indicators that um, will lead the items that we select, which are the questions themselves that measure these constructs. Uh, so if you would like more information about this, then uh, the WHO website has some information. And the blue hyperlink there refers to our May meeting report with the names of the members of the working group and more detail. Thank you. <laughs>